In this video, I'm going to sort of take some of the things we learned in the last two videos and start applying this uh, a little bit more to our symmetry operations. And so symmetry operations uh, can kind of be boiled down to two types of rotations called proper and improper rotations, where a proper is you know, just what you think of as a rotation or an improper rotation uh, is a rotation with a reflection uh, where, you know, a reflection, a pure reflection is just kind of like uh, the improper rotation without the rotation part uh, and so forth. And so we will kind of uh, work our way towards that. Uh, using what we learned in the last couple of videos. So a unitary matrix uh, has this property as uh, as we showed uh, in a couple of videos ago. So the uh, conjugate transpose is equal to the inverse. Uh, but if, uh, so I think, so I changed this to uh, our R bold here. So I'll do that here. Uh, and this should also be R bold here. Uh, but anyway, but if our, if our uh, matrix here has elements that are all real, uh, then the uh, conjugate transpose, or the transpose is just equal to the conjugate transpose because uh, you there's no conjugation sort of happening in a real number, uh, which is then equal to our our inverse here. And it is said to be real orthogonal and has this property where the transpose time, times our, our matrix multiplied by our, uh, our matrix here is just equal to the identity matrix. Uh, so there are two kinds of matrices, which I said, there are the proper rotations and then improper rotations. The first uh, has a determinant of plus one, while the latter has a determinant of minus one. And so we can look at the matrix representations of our uh, example C3V group here. So we have these matrix representations. And so these three here on the left uh, will actually have a determinant of plus one. And these three on the right, which have the reflections, should have a determinant of minus one. So I just looked at a couple examples here. So the determinant of C3, which is this one up here, is in fact equal to plus one. The determinant of our sigma two here, which is one of our uh, reflections, does indeed have a minus one, a determinant of minus one. And so we want our matrix R to be real orthogonal since it's most convenient to use. Uh, we therefore want to make a, a way to make sure that our matrix is real orthogonal, uh, which is unitary and containing only real elements. Uh, if we use a three by three matrix, uh, R, which can be diagonalized uh, with the eigenvalues, so these lambdas, 1, 2, and 3, it means that there is a basis, uh, this E tilde here, uh, which is equal to our unitary uh, matrix uh, acting on our basis here, where the matrix representation of our symmetry operation, which is the unbold R here, is diagonal. Uh, it may be, though, that this unitary matrix uh, and therefore, our uh, our new matrix here, which is this R bar, uh, contain complex elements, meaning it's convenient to combine the original basis with complex coefficients, which give the Hermitian conjugate here. So uh, we uh, so this is the Hermitian conjugate of our new matrix R here, which just has the uh, the uh, conjugate versions of our lambdas here, which are the uh, the eigenvalues. And this gives, uh, so if we multiply these uh, two matrices together, we end up with this. So it's just each element uh, with the complex times the, or the conjugate times the non-conjugated version here. And if uh, our R is a unitary matrix, then these, uh, these uh, products here should each equal one, which would give us the identity matrix. Uh, so that, yeah, that's what it's showing here. Each of these 
products should be one, uh, where the lambda i are complex roots to a cubic equation, which means they're always accompanied by their complex conjugate. Uh, and so uh, a solution to that would be this. So if we took this e to the i theta times this e to the minus i theta, that's just e to the i theta over e to the i theta, which gives us one. And so these satisfy this. And same with the lambda threes here, if it's plus or minus, uh, the, with, which is just a real number, so it doesn't conjugate, uh, that would give us a one in this position here. Uh, where the lambda three equaling positive one is the proper rotation, and when it's the minus one, it equals an improper rotation, which makes sense if you have a minus in this sort of z position here, you're essentially turning you know, all of your uh, sort of Z's into minus Z's and minus Z's into Z's, if we want to think about it in sort of Cartesian coordinate terms. Uh, but if we want to get a real basis, uh, our E tilde here, we need a further transformation. So we need this E hat here equaling this further transformation of this E tilde, which is equaling this uh, V times this U, both acting on our original basis here. Uh, and so once again, this uh, should be and R and R hat there, and so we have, uh, so we have this V being equal to this matrix here, and then its conjugate transpose being equal to this one, uh, and so our R bar here was this one where we had the e to the i theta, e to the minus i theta, and then the plus and minus one in this position here. Uh, so if we act these two uh, matrices up here on that, so I went through all of the uh, matrix multiplication with that. Uh, if you want to look at that in more detail on your own, the lecture notes will be linked to in the description down below, but we end up getting to this, which we can then use these trigonometric identities uh, for this, which gives us this matrix here. And so our R hat is equal to this matrix here, which has this uh, cosine, minus cosine, sine, and cosine up here, then plus or minus one down here. And we see that these are all real numbers here. Uh, so we've been able to get rid of the complex numbers uh, that we had uh, in uh, in this one up here where we had these e to the i thetas and e to the minus i thetas uh, in our diagonal up here. Uh, so we were able to get uh, real numbers now for our matrix. Uh, and so when we do our symmetry operation on this vector that is just equal to our r hat uh, acting on the vector. Uh, so we can see here that if we act our r hat on this vector, uh, we end up with this, so this cosine theta v1 minus sine theta v2, this sine theta v1 plus cosine theta v2, then this plus or minus v3 up here. So a pure reflection uh, is when we're not rotating, and so theta would be equal to zero because we're not rotating by theta. Uh, and we have uh, this minus V3 because we're doing a pure reflection. And so cosine of theta equals one, or sine of zero equals zero and cosine of zero equals one. And so we have this, uh, which just gives us this matrix here. So one, one, and minus one in this uh, bottom right position here, which acting that on our vector here just gives us V1, V2, and then minus V3. Uh, then if we want to do an inversion, that's uh, when theta equals pi, uh, and we have the minus v3 here, and so cosine of pi equals minus 1, sine of pi equals 0, and so we end up with this matrix where it's just minus 1 on each of the diagonal terms, which just turns uh, our v1, v2, v3 into minus v1, minus v2, minus v3 in our vector. So any operation that preserves lengths and angles, which was unitary, which is you know one of the conditions we wanted, uh, and leaves one point unmoved, so a point symmetry can be thought of as a rotation proper or improper about a unique axis uh, through the point, uh, through that point that is unmoved. Uh, so in other words, the only operation 
which uh, a point group can contain are either rotations about an axis or rotations accompanied by a reflection across a plane perpendicular to that axis. Uh, and I'll describe this in sort of more, uh, I guess, visual, uh, visual terms in the next video. Uh, but so a theta equals zero and a theta equals pi correspond to a pure reflection and a pure inversion. Uh, and so we can sort of say that the uh, D here of our pure reflection is equal to this 1, 1, minus 1. Uh, and you could actually uh, have this with a pure reflection. You could have the minus 1 in sort of any one of these positions, and it would just be reflecting across a different, uh, a different plane. Uh, but then our inversion is where it's minus 1 in all of them. So this D here, once again, is sort of uh, taking, sort of mapping from our symmetry operation onto this matrix here. Uh, and so the D, remember, is that German word for, uh, for, uh, ref or for mapping, rather, or for representation, uh, to be precise. So I think, I don't remember what it, the German word was offhand, dis, distallung or something, uh, but it's just mapping uh, our, our symmetry operations onto these matrices here. Uh, and so we have that uh, so this is a rotation here, which uh, we can have equal to uh, this, uh, this right here, which is our reflection uh, uh, times, uh, so matrix multiplied by our pure rotation here. Uh, and we can have that be equal to our inversion times this pure rotation uh, with the plus pi's here. Uh, and essentially what this means is that any improper rotation is the commutative product of a proper rotation and either a reflection or an inversion. And so any improper rotation is just a proper rotation matrix multiplied by either a pure reflection or a pure inversion. Uh, and then so the trace of a rotation matrix is the plus or minus one, uh, which just uh, is telling us whether the sort of bottom one there is plus or minus one uh, plus cosine of theta because uh, these two positive cosines are on our other diagonals. And therefore, uh, and therefore the trace is only dependent on the rotation angle uh, and is then independent of the axes. Uh, and then so in finite groups, the rotation angles are restricted to these uh, sort of integer multiples of 2 pi, uh, or I guess integer uh, divisions of 2 pi as well, where n is the order uh, of the corresponding symmetry, such that a rotation r repeated n times gets us back to the identity element. Uh, so the generator of rotations, which uh, is denoted as this cn, and so using C for the rotation uh, symmetry operations, and uh, we'll be talking a lot about these C ends and stuff in the, in the upcoming videos when we actually start getting into these uh, point groups here. Uh, but the generator of rotations, C n, is such that uh, if, we, if we do it n times, it gets us back to the identity element since uh, the n theta will be equal to 2 pi. Uh, since theta is equal to this k times 2 pi over n, then uh, this, uh, this rotation generator done k times will be k times theta, where if k equals n, then we have theta equals 2 pi. Uh, and so uh, the c sub n k times uh, when k equals n is c sub n n times, which is equal to the identity operation. And so, uh, you know, whenever this k is equal to the n, we just have theta equals 2 pi. And so that gets us back to the identity operation because we've rotated around. So 2 pi is the radians version of 360 degrees. So it means we've done a full 360 degree rotation. So we know that this is a cyclic group uh, where we can do the product of k equals 1 to n. Uh, so once we get up to uh, k equals n, it gets us back to the identity element and gives us a cyclic group. Uh, but anyway, in the next, uh, well, 
most likely several videos, I will actually be finally getting into the sort of point group, uh, the point groups and stuff like that, sort of defining the point groups based on like what uh, sort of symmetry operations are contained in them. And then we will uh, expand that into space groups by adding translations and things like that. Uh, but anyway, we will be using, you know, all this stuff that we've learned in the past few videos uh, because these symmetry operations, we always want to be able to represent them as matrices. And so uh, knowing this, uh, this sort of linear algebra is important to being able to work with these uh, symmetry groups. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.